Nebula. This is humerus. Humerus. There's two bones right here. Radius and ulna. Yep, radius and ulna. And then moving downwards, metacarpals. So, starting with the muscles on the scapula, there's two major ones. Does anyone know this one in the front? Yeah, supraspinatus. So, supraspinatus is the one in the front, and then you can feel the head of this, uh, or sorry, the spine of the scapula separating it from the, what's the one in the back? Infraspinatus muscles, the one in the back. Um, moving next to that, this is going to be your deltoid muscle. Um, and then this is one muscle, it's your triceps brachii, and if you guys remember from last week, there's two heads of it, so you have your long head, which is the much bigger one, and then your lateral head, which is the smaller one, and um, the function of the triceps brachii muscle is to extend the elbow. So opposite of the triceps brachii is your biceps, yep, so this is your biceps brachii, and along with the brachialis muscle right here, um, those both help to flex the elbow joint. Um, moving down, um, this is your antebrachium. So these muscles I like to group by their function. So if you think about right now, we're in the front, in the outside, so cranial laterals, and these are all going to be extensors of either the carpus and some of them the digits. Whereas on the other side, the caudomedial side, those are all going to be flexors of the carpus. Um, so starting in the front and working your way back, this first muscle is going to be your radial carpal extensor muscle. And this one um, does not keep going down to the digits, it only helps to flex the carpus, so it's going to attach down there. Um, next to that is your common digital extensor muscle, and this one runs all the way down, keeps going down, and it attaches to the extensor process on your pocket bone. So that's your common digital extensor. Affects not only the carpus, but also down all the way to your digits. Next to that is this really skinny one. This is your lateral digital extensor, which also affects the digits. And then this is your lateral ulnar muscle, which only helps um, to extend the carpus. Um, on your other side, we ha we're gonna flip it over at the end, so we only have to flip it once because it's kind of decaying. But um, on the other side, you're gonna have your flexors. So you're going to have, um, starting from the front of the limb to the back, you're going to have your radial carpal flexor and your ulnar carpal flexor. And so those just extend the carpus. Then you're also going to have um, your deep digital flexor muscle and your superficial digital flexor muscle. And both of those travel down to affect the digits. The superficial attaches onto P2, um, and then your deep digital, digital flexor actually wraps around the navicular bone and attaches into the coffin bone down below. So it's the deep digital flexor tendon is the only one that attaches to the P3 flexors to help flex. That's the deep digital. Yeah. Um, oh, another extensor right up here is your oblique carpal muscle, and that helps to extend the pelvis. It's this smooth flat one right there on the that helps extend the carpal. Um, oblique carpal muscle. Um, moving down, we're going to get more into your suspensory apparatus. So there's three parts of your suspensory apparatus. First you have your, can anyone tell me what the structure is? Yeah, suspensory ligament. So that's going to split into two and each side of that is going to attach to the second part, which is your proximal suspensory And so that's the second part. And then third, continuing on from there, um, will be distal sesamoidean ligaments, which help um, support and hold the fat, like from the fat lock down. Are you distal sesamoidean ligaments? There's three of those. You have cruciate distal sesamoidean ligaments, straight and oblique. So those are the three different types as well. Um, we, there was a palmar annular ligament and it's missing, it got cut off or whatever. Um, so there was that, so that's also helpful for support and stuff. Um, but those are the big ones for supporting it. So when we talk about the stay apparatus, talking about the main objective of it, does anyone know why there is a stay apparatus before they sleep? So it can stand. Yeah. So basically, so it can stand while sleeping. They're prey animals, so they can run away. Um, um, so, and the whole point too is that it's with minimal muscle activity, so you don't want to have to like, contract all of your muscles while you're standing and sleeping. So to help.
help with that, your um, serratus ventralis muscle, you don't have to identify it, but it um, helps support a lot of the weight of the forelimb, and that's one of the ones that straps this forelimb onto the horse's um, body. Um, so, and looking at this naturally, this shoulder joint, what is it, what is it doing? What, is it um, extended or flexed? So when it wants to keep flexing, it wants to be like completely flexed, shut. So to help keep that, um, you have your triceps brachii here helping to extend the elbow, and then your biceps brachii and your brachial muscle to help give it the support to not flex. Um, and yeah, so I'm sorry, your biceps brachii and your radial carpal extensor to help your sh um, shoulder, or sorry, your elbow not to flex. Um, moving down other parts of the stay apparatus, um, your common digital extensor muscle turns into tendon and helps support everything down below the carpus. And then um, your whole suspensory apparatus is part of the stay apparatus, as well as superficial and digital flexor, or sorry, superficial and deep digital flexor tendons also help give it the support that it needs to not use a lot of muscle.